East Africa, one of the most beautiful and diverse landscapes in the world. This magnificent wilderness and its fascinating wildlife is one of the few remaining unspoiled regions on Earth. Kenya is crossed by the Great Rift Valley, a large African ditch that began to develop around 35 million years ago due to the tectonic movements of the African and Arabian plates. This splendid landscape contains several lakes, including Lake Naivasha. The most elevated lake in the eastern part of the Great Rift Valley is particularly impressive due to its large populations of wildlife. Today, an area frequented by huge numbers of waterfowl, this was once the landing zone of the legendary flying boats of British Overseas Airways. However, those days are long gone. Today, the conservation of the region's wildlife is the number one priority. This freshwater lake is an important habitat for the country's wildlife that has suffered due to the encroachment of man. Americans are particularly at home in Lake Naivasha due to the large quantity of fish within its waters. The pelican is one of the heaviest flying birds. The small Crescent Island is one of the lake's special attractions, with lots to see both on and off the island. The island is situated at the southern end of Lake Navasha. Some years ago, it was transformed into a privately owned conservation area. The vegetation on Crescent Island is like a typical savanna landscape with various cacti and succulents, as well as the strikingly tall umbrella acacias that have become a natural landmark of the African flora. There is nothing here to indicate that Crescent Island is located on the edge of a long extinct volcano. Lake Naivasha is the ideal habitat for both the rare fish eagle and African eagle. Thus, it is a perfect location from which to observe these fascinating birds. Due to its rich variety of wildlife and the spectacular beauty of its landscape, Kenya is one of Africa's most popular safari destinations. Indeed, the Republic of Kenya contains no less than 24 national parks that safeguard both nature and wildlife. The Masai Mara National Park is located around six hours from Nairobi. It's one of the country's most extraordinary game reserves. Its name indicates the presence of one of Africa's most colorful tribes, the Masai, whose traditional home is here. Today, around half a million members of this legendary tribe of herdsmen live in Kenya. The Maasai are the best known of East Africa's ethnic groups, originating from what is now Sudan. The lifeline of the endless savanna landscape is the Mara River. 
which is not without its dangers. Some sections of the river are crowded with crocodiles, a frightening looking reptile from primeval times. The muddy water provides them with the perfect camouflage. But beware, the hippos in the Mara River can be extremely dangerous and should be treated with a good degree of caution. The annual migration of the Maasai Mara's gnus must be one of the most breathtaking spectacles on the African continent. The nature reserve is one of the most highly populated wildlife areas in the world and an amazing half million gazelle roam at savannas. Numerous varieties of antelope, gnu and zebra populate the plains of the high plateau. And almost everywhere, those who come here are able to observe the wildlife in its natural surroundings. Almost 100 varieties of mammal live in the Maasai Mara National Park, including one that has an unsavory reputation, which it doesn't really deserve, the spotted hyena that mainly feeds on carrion. In contrast to the hyena is the lion, the king of the jungle. These big predatory cats have impressed man since the beginning of time and have been the subject of countless works of art. The largest bird on the planet, the ostrich, was once worshipped. The feathers of the ostrich were much sought after for ladies' fashions. So they were hunted down and their numbers fell into decline. The giraffe is a striking sight and a popular photo opportunity. They serenely survey the landscape and are always on the lookout for possible predators. However, the most visited nature reserve in Kenya is not the Maasai Mara. It's the Amboseli Reserve, whose name was derived from Lake Amboseli. This area also once belonged to the Maasai. They still live here, although this grassland has been a conservation area since 1948. The park is famous for its massive herds of elephant. These incredible creatures can be observed freely here and don't appear to be phased by all the attention they're receiving. Almost a thousand elephant live in the Amboseli Game Reserve. Both scientists and zoologists take full advantage of the fact that these creatures can so easily be observed. Despite their massive size and immense strength that makes them almost invincible in the animal kingdom, they have a peace-loving nature. These gentle giants owe their amazing strength to regular nourishment. An adult elephant gets through around 300 kilograms of food each day. These weighty pachyderms roam through the savannah at their ease, most of the time in search of food. The African elephant is a wonderful sight, yet it is an endangered species, and this is due to man's greed.
Until they became a protected species, for hundreds of years they were killed for their ivory. Due to Africa's many nature parks, their future and that of many other fascinating creatures has been assured. The large variety of wildlife here indicates the ecological importance of East Africa's national parks. The Amboseli National Park also contains many of East Africa's most important landscapes. It represents the magnificence of the African flora and fauna that grows in this relatively small, protected area. Due to the small size of this game reserve, it's easy to observe these fascinating pachyderms in their natural surroundings. The famous elephants of Amboseli. The beauty of these powerful animals is only surpassed by the splendid colors of the sunset that make the landscape shine out each early evening in all of its magical glory. On the opposite side of the equator, close to the provincial capital of Nakuru, is yet another remarkable national park. Lake Nakuru. Its shallow water has no outlet, so contains a high content of soda, and it's a paradise for bird life. Each year, large numbers of birds populate the lake and its banks. Flamingos live here, and also an increasing number of pelicans that never fail to fascinate. The most striking feature of the pelican is its long beak that facilitates its intake of fish. Each day the pelican consumes about 10% of its own body weight in fish. Originally this area solely protected waterfowl. But in 1967 Lake Nakuru became Africa's first national park a perfect sanctuary for wildlife. Along with the lake, the park also has several hills and forest-covered plains, and many other natural inhabitants. Lions also inhabit the park's bushland. In the daytime, these big, majestic predators amble lazily along. It's usually only after sunset and in the early hours of the morning that they go in search of food. On the eastern banks of the lake is vegetation that is unique in Africa. A forest of euphorbia. But nature also has its less appealing side. At the roadside, vultures eat the carcass of a dead animal. Kenya possesses eight varieties of vulture. These predatory birds can have a body height of more than one meter and feed mainly on carrion. So they're somewhat bad reputation. Sometimes it's possible to see a leopard in Nakuru National Park. The zebra has a striking coat and is extremely common in many other parts of East Africa. Some years ago, the very rare reticulated giraffe settled in Nakuru. Since then, their numbers have grown from strength to strength. 
While the giraffes search for food at the top of the trees, numerous warthogs scan the ground for nourishment. The park is one of the final sanctuaries of the hook-lipped rhinoceros. Indeed, in 1987, there were only two. Thanks to the help of various animal conservation organizations, Nakuru's hook-lipped rhinoceros have survived. The banks of Lake Beringo, another lake within the East African ditch, can only be visited with an experienced guide. The journey through this wilderness is a beautiful adventure, but it also contains many dangers. Some areas are crowded with crocodiles. It's best to keep at a safe distance as close encounters can prove to be fatal. In addition to the crocodiles, there is a large number of smaller reptiles that live close to the lake. Various safari lodges at Lake Boringo provide their guests with boat tours that travel into the region's more remote areas. Over 450 varieties of bird make Boringo Lake one of the most important and famous bird watching areas in the whole of Kenya. The African eagle is the king of the sky. From the tops of the trees that grow on the banks of the lake, they keep a watchful eye on everything that happens on the lake below. The scream of the African eagle has become synonymous with the local landscape and is often referred to as the voice of Africa. At the lake are a number of fishermen. Man has lived in the Lake Baringo area for thousands of years. Today, around 9,000 members of the Enjem tribe live here. This African eagle seems to have an eye on the fish, although small flamingos, ibis and other water birds also form part of their diet. These predatory birds belong to the goshawk family and are skillful hunters. As soon as they've caught a fish, they return to the land and to their favorite resting place in the treetops. Their catch can weigh up to one and a half kilos. The African eagle is forced to swim to the banks of the lake with its heavier victims, where it tucks into a tasty treat. Various hot springs plus the El Molo and Ol Arabel rivers supply Lake Beringo with fresh water. On the eastern banks, there are sections where sulfurous water bubbles come up from amid the rocky terrain. The landscape is particularly idyllic due to the dense vegetation that grows on the banks of the lake. The land around the lake is densely wooded. It provides another marvelous habitat for the region's wildlife. In the eastern section of the East African ditch, Lake Bagaria is surrounded by the steep slopes of the Soraco Escarpment.
Located almost a thousand meters above sea level, this lake became famous due to the huge numbers of flamingo that live here. Tens of thousands of this pink water bird have transformed the lake into a shining sea of color, full of life and beauty. A truly captivating sight. The banks of Lake Begoria are always full of hustle and bustle. In addition to the flamingo, which have the largest population here, a further 135 species of bird also live on this nature reserve. The depth of color of the flamingo depends on the amount of carotenoid that is in their food. The alkaline water of Lake Bogoria provides the perfect habitat for a special kind of algae that is the favorite food of the flamingo. To observe these colorful water birds in their natural surroundings is a special treat, with birds constantly taking off and landing. The first European discoverer of the lake, the Bishop of Kampala, was deeply impressed by the natural spectacle of the lake's flamingo. Today, it is not only ornithologists who are fascinated by the activities of these birds. Unfortunately, there are few places on earth where it's possible to experience these extraordinary water birds in such vast numbers. On the western banks of the lake, meter-high fountains shoot up into the air. These hot water geysers demonstrate the subterranean volcanic forces of this region. The local wildlife stays at a safe distance from the geysers of Lake Bogoria. The steaming hot springs can prove fatal for the flamingo and other water birds that live here. Nevertheless, quite often the bones of dead animals can be seen close to the geysers. Some venture too close and are killed by the hot steam. The extremely high content of sulfur in the springs promotes the growth of a special kind of algae that is eaten by the flamingo and is thus responsible for the large number of flamingo that live on Lake Bogoria. In the distance, modern skyscrapers announce the capital of Kenya, Nairobi. It contains a number of buildings that date back to colonial times. The metropolis of today was founded by British railroad workers, who at the end of the 19th century built a camp here. The striking Uhuru Monument dates back to 1973 and is a reminder of Kenya's hard-fought independence. In addition to its many interesting museums, the city park is also well worth a visit. Here one can relax in the shade of a tree, away from the hubbub of the city. In the northeast of Tanzania is the fast-growing boom city of Arusha, which has a population of 350,000. 
Since the 1970s, its inhabitants have multiplied sevenfold. Arusha has also developed into what is now the center of the country's tourist industry. Each day the bus station is extremely busy. It's a lively place. Tanzania was once home to many traders who had important commercial connections with the Arab kingdoms. The colorful clothing of the women reflects the joie de vivre of East Africa that has managed to survive despite the many economic and cultural problems that exist here. Most of Tanzania's population earns its living from agriculture and the export trade. Exotic spices are still to be found in the markets here. This valuable commodity was not only shipped to the Arabian Peninsula, but also to as far as Europe. After this short visit to East Africa's city life, we return to the wilderness and to the Arusha National Park. The amazing variety of the landscape is the main attraction of this relatively small nature reserve that covers only 140 square kilometers. A special attraction is the Ngodoto Crater. The crater is full of wildlife and along with the Momela Lakes is one of the most beautiful areas within the park. Small aircraft are one of the most popular means of transport to one of Africa's most famous natural landmarks. At an altitude of 5,895 meters, Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain on the African continent. For most of the time, its summit is covered by a dense ring of cloud that gives the mountain an air of mystique. From a bird's eye view, the beauty of nature takes on a whole new dimension. The sight of the fantastic landscape below is absolutely awesome. We eventually return to the starting point of this extraordinary round trip close to Mount Kilimanjaro. Around 120 kilometers west of Arusha, within the East African ditch, is the Lake Manyara National Park that is named after the lake of the same name. In the dry season, the shallow lake reduces in size. Vegetation can only survive on its banks. The belt of green trees and surrounding grassland are home to many African animals, such as zebra. The water is inhabited by the hippopotamus. Not far from the hippo pools, numerous gnus and various types of antelope roam through the small nature reserve. Due to long dry periods, parts of the shallow lake are transformed into a muddy swampland that is an ideal habitat for various waterfowl. These zebra don't seem to be impressed by the splendid scenery. Baboons inhabit the forest areas of the park and are to be found throughout Africa. The young are particularly cute.
For wealthy safari travelers, there are a number of exclusive hotels and lodges that provide a good range of modern comforts as well as spectacular views of the surroundings. A few hundred meters from the lodges is the wilderness and its realm of many fascinating creatures. The landscape of the park could hardly be more beautiful. Beyond the dense Lirai forest is one of the most outstanding and stunning natural paradises on earth. The Ngoro Noro crater has a unique ecological system and benefits from frequent rainfall. For centuries, the bottom of the crater has been important to the Maasai people as it has provided their cattle with fertile pasture. In addition to the cattle, the crater also contains many wild animals. Close to the Lirai forest, several families of hippo have settled in two pools, much to the enjoyment of visitors. Also, the largest bird on earth, the ostrich, feels at home in the Ngoronoro as well as the warthog and all other creatures that live here. Around 4,000 zebra inhabit this unique, protected landscape. The warthogs haven't been counted yet. The local lions take advantage of the many grass-eaters that live within the crater. These big predatory cats look as though nothing could ever bother them. With the foundation of the national park, the Maasai were forced to abandon their villages and settle outside the crater. Following a warm and festive welcoming ceremony accompanied by traditional songs, visitors are permitted to enter the village. Inside the village, some of the men have gathered to perform a traditional ritual, the jumping dance of the Maasai. The ululations of the young men are of great significance, and the height of the jumps is a demonstration of each warrior's strength. In Maasai culture, the women also play a vital role. They carry much responsibility for the welfare of the village community. For some years, the most important development in the life of the Maasai has been that of education and schools. Man has always lived in this region. The age of these settlements becomes obvious at the Old Upai Gorge in the north of Tanzania. According to research, this is the primeval cell of humanity. The 50 kilometer long canyons featured some sensational findings. In 1959, an almost two million year old hominid and skull made scientist Mary Leakey world famous. Rainwater has shaped the landscape and made it into what it is today. 
has also washed away the uppermost layers of soil in the surroundings of the canyon. The north of Tanzania features another precious treasure of nature, the Serengeti, the endless land as the Maasai describe this area. In addition to its vastness and beauty, the Serengeti is home of a large amount of fascinating creatures. It's one of the largest as well as the most famous nature reserve in the world. In 1921, it was made into a protected area by the German colonial government of the day. The East African Highland is often referred to as the Garden of Eden, a natural paradise. The pools of the Serengeti National Park contain countless hippos, living proof of the importance of this nature park. The huge variety of animals here ranges from predators such as the cheetah to the vulture that feeds on dead animals. With a total of three million large mammals, the Serengeti National Park contains more wildlife than any other in the world. This large and unique natural habitat assures the survival of many species of wildlife that would otherwise be threatened by extinction. In the early morning we embark on a unique journey through the amazing wilderness of the Serengeti. The air balloon slowly fills up. The basket is entered in a prone position, a somewhat unusual necessity. Next, the hot air balloon rises into the air. Majestically, it crosses the plains. From here, the landscape below reveals its full beauty and its true dimensions become obvious. From up high, Africa's wildlife also takes on a new dimension. The animals are frightened of the balloon and run away. The time goes quickly and soon we find our feet on solid ground once again. After a glass of champagne to celebrate this special event, a traditional English breakfast is served. The small town of Moshi, at the foot of the mighty Mount Kilimanjaro, has visible Arab and Muslim influences. In recent years, Moshi has developed into a tourist center, as it is the starting point of various excursions to Mount Kilimanjaro. In former times, the city was known as the center of the coffee trade. But today, life on the busy streets has been transformed. For centuries, the local traders supplied the Arab countries with coffee, long before the European colonial powers penetrated this area. However, the liveliness of the markets has survived, as well as some of the buildings that date back to the colonial days of German East Africa.
Many inhabitants of Moshi, such as the owner of this tent hire shop, live from the tourist trade. The Selous Game Reserve on the Rufiji River is also a popular tourist destination but is only accessible by plane. The terrain here is extremely hostile. The river is the lifeline of Selous. The Rufiji River is an important habitat for the indigenous plant and wildlife. Covering 50,000 square kilometers, this is the largest state-controlled game reserve in the whole of Africa. Well-appointed camps provide comfortable accommodation in the heart of nature. Boats are the most important mode of transport in this watery world. Indeed, it's only by boat that the remote regions of this fascinating world can be reached. The landscape features many notable plants, such as the Barassus palm. Those who require a little more adventure can explore the surroundings of the Rufiji by foot, as long as they're accompanied by an armed ranger. Wild animals are everywhere, and so at any minute, a dangerous situation can develop. Despite the difficult conditions, this area is inhabited and the local people can be seen going about their daily life on the Rufiji River and its banks. Mukuba Express is a railroad that is extremely important for the local population. It connects the Salus region with the coastal metropolis of Dar es Salaam. Early in the morning, both traders and travelers gather at the station. small station in the north of the Selous Game Reserve is for many the only connection to the outside world. Everybody is waiting for the train to arrive and many merchants hope to sell their goods to the train's passengers. Following a long stop, the train continues its journey in the direction of Dar es Salaam, the eastern terminal of the Mukuba Express. The railway line first travels across the diverse and natural landscape of the Seleuce Game Reserve and numerous smaller settlements. The journey on the Mukuba Express is one of the most rewarding and authentic ways in which to explore the landscape of the Seleus region. The train travels slowly through the African wilderness for several hours, until more and more villages appear as we approach the coast. The Mzenga train station is one of the last stops of the Mukuba Express on its journey to Dar es Salaam. The historic beginnings of this quite remarkable railway line date back to German colonial times at the beginning of the 20th century.
At that time, the Middle Land Railway Line was one of the most challenging technical projects in the German East African colonies. Even today, this 1200 km long railroad is the country's most important legacy of the former German Empire. In the late afternoon, the Mukuba Express reaches the point at which this wonderful journey comes to an end. Dar es Salaam, or Harbour of Peace as the Sultan of Zanzibar called the new settlement in the Indian Ocean in 1862. Its strategic location on the coast and the natural harbour helped this settlement to grow at rapid pace. Fishing continues to play an important role in the life of the people. And a visit to the fish market is an absolute must. The Ascari Monument commemorates some of the victims of the First World War. Dar es Salaam's National Museum gives a fascinating insight into the history of the country and East Africa as a whole. The Lutheran Church dates back to more recent times. The city is also a Roman Catholic bishop's see. Numerous buildings that date back to 30 years of German colonial rule can still be seen and are situated in the historic center of the city. St. Joseph's Cathedral is another Christian church that is important in the city's history and has become one of the main landmarks of Dar es Salaam. Five times a day, ferry boats shuttle between Dar es Salaam and the island of Zanzibar. Depending on the type of boat, the journey takes between one and a half and three hours. The earliest visitors to this group of islands were most likely Arab traders. At the center of Zanzibar city is the historic district of Stone Town with its narrow lanes and fine old buildings that date back to British colonial times. Although Arab influence is more than obvious. This district contains various markets with numerous fish, fruit and vegetable stalls. Everywhere is a hive of colourful activity. In former times, the markets here focused mainly on the spice trade. Slaves were also traded here. From Zanzibar, they were transported to each corner of the world. It was only at the end of the 19th century that the slave trade was banned. Today it is only small boats that anchor at the natural harbour of Dar es Salaam. The dhows are used mainly for commercial fishing. Its location close to the sea gives Stone Town a truly captivating atmosphere. Remains of the Arab Fort, a historic fortress complex that dates back to the times of the early Arab monarchs, is still a wonderful sight. Once the Imams of Oman resided here. The former Sultan's Palace is now called the People's Palace. The museum features the opulent life of the Sultan's court. The elegant and traditionally designed House of Wonders, the Bayt al-Ajaib, was built according to the command of a sultan.
Over time, other once splendid palaces have fallen into ruin and given Stone Town a mysterious atmosphere. Along with the famous old town of Zanzibar City, the entire island of Zanzibar is full of charm and exotic flair. The fascinating mixture of Arab and African culture makes Zanzibar truly unique. When the sun sets on the horizon and the colorful sky above the sea shines out in all its splendor, the island is at its most beautiful. There are few other places on earth that offer the huge variety of nature, as does the legendary east of the African continent. A magical destination, a wild African paradise that is second to none.